nations to be the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. disciplinary hearing before the Board of Education is recommended by the superintendent, Patricia Lucas. It is set forth in a letter from the superintendent dated November the 30th, 2011 to Brittany Williams. Will these parties please identify themselves for the record, starting with Ms. Lucas. Patricia Lucas, And my name is John Roush. I'm here with Ms. Williams, who will be, by the way, requesting a closed hearing when we get to that point. Go ahead, Brittany. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. You speak louder. So you do desire to have a closed hearing? Yes, sir. Okay. If closed, I call for a motion that we meet in uh, executive session. I'll second. All those in favor of meeting executive session, please say aye. Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. In favor to come out of executive session, please say aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. Come out of executive session. I'm not a change. Don't fall down. Who second? I did. No, I made the motion. You made the motion. I made I'm not wearing my I want you to know I am not wearing my sword. You look nice. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We're back in regular session and uh, we're approval of minutes for December the 6th, 2011, regular meeting. All, right. all those in favor of approving minutes, please say aye. Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. Now we're at public comments. Do um, you sign up for public comments? Okay. Um, presentations, Mr. Cummings. You're up. Hi, all right. Good evening. I will, under the circumstances, be just as quick as I possibly can, uh, but to begin with, I want to uh, show you a, a short video. It's probably only about 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's what we on that screen. Mr. Tony. video it, it shows an incident that happened in, in uh, Canal County you can see the stop arm coming out on the bus uh, of course the signs are out two cars keep coming by well, this happened just not too long ago uh, in Canal County. Uh, this is the kind of thing when I saw this, just to tell you the truth, it scared me to death. Especially when I found out that uh, about 600 times a day in the state of West Virginia alone, that this kind of thing happens. Uh, and of the 600 times, 
about 15 times it's on the right hand side of the bus on the side that the kids get out of so when I saw this I thought man we've got to do something and, uh, one of the things we started looking at was a new camera system uh, the camera system that we currently have uh, we have 49 uh, or 47 routes we have 47 buses uh, 29 of them have the old VHS cameras uh, that really you can't see anything and the ones that do work you can't really tell anything about it uh, but when <coughs> excuse me when I saw this uh, I thought well we need to look at getting cameras that have uh, the cameras on the stop arm uh, so that when this kind of thing happens that we can see uh, hopefully a, a person that's driving the, the vehicle and we can get their license plate number that way we can go to the police and the police will help us. Um, so when I started this, uh, the first thing I did, I called the state police and talked to them. Uh, they were all about what we were trying to do. Uh, they were all about the safety of kids. And um, you know, so they started their initi initiative. In a six county area, we have uh, a police officer on the bus with us, which we, which we have already done. Uh, but we want to continue this and continue working to try to get this thing stopped. Uh, one of the other key pieces that, that I see with the camera system is that the camera system faces out the front of the bus so that you can see what's happening with the student in the front. Uh, with this type of thing, uh, you think that the bus driver did everything that he could uh, for really the procedural kind of things that you can't see from that video is the kind of things that we have to do. Uh, many of you may have seen on the on the news where we had the thumbs up and the thumbs down with the buses. Uh, procedurally, when a kid gets off the bus, they're going to cross the street. Uh, they need to go up here and stop on the right-hand side of the road on the burn. Our driver will give them a thumbs up signal to come over to the middle of the, uh, the road. The driver can look both ways and make sure cars aren't coming, give them another signal, a thumbs up, so that kid can go on across the road. Uh, with it happening 600 times a day, I'm amazed that, uh, that we don't have really somebody injured or killed every day in the state of West Virginia. Uh, so the camera system allows us to monitor, to make sure to, that our drivers are following procedures, to make sure that our drivers are doing the thumbs up and the thumbs down so that we can protect our kids. Uh, no camera system's worth anything if you don't review it. Uh, so we've kind of set up a procedure where um, one of our supervisors every day is going to be checking periodically cameras and buses for this and for other things so that we can make sure we're doing the right things uh, to protect the kids. Um, some of the other benefits of the camera system for me, uh, it has a GPS system that is associated with it. I get phone calls every day that so-and-so's bus didn't run. Uh, they weren't there to stop to pick up the kids. Uh, with the GPS system, it has a map on Google Maps that I can pull up and I can see every stop that, that bus has made and at what time, uh, so that we know that our drivers are doing the things that they need to do to get kids to school. Uh, with funding, I'm trying to rush through this because I know you've been here for a long time, but uh, with the funding, of course, as you can see, it's $95,000. Uh, obviously, there are cheaper systems out there, but when you start looking at the things that you need, when you need a camera on the stop arm so that we can help slow this down. When we have a camera that's facing out the front where we can see that our drivers are following those proper procedures, uh, then I think it's worth the extra run uh, to protect these kids. But uh, with transportation, uh, a lot of this money is reimbursable to us. Uh, it's money that's coming out of our pocket right now, but it's coming out uh, of, of the transportation fund, which we have the money available. I apologize, I didn't realize when I started this, I, I probably should have come to you guys at the very beginning and said this is what we're looking at and that kind of stuff, uh, but that, that was just my mistake, uh, I, I wasn't sure, but uh, I think we have to do everything that we can to, to make sure that, that our kids are safe and I think this is a step in the right direction. Uh, obviously with the 47 routes and the 29 cameras that we're replacing now, uh, my plan will be to every year to upgrade the existing ones that we have so that we have those cameras on the stop on arms and, and uh, in the front of the bus so that we can make sure all of our routes are safe. Uh, so I, the reason that I was here today was to, you know, just to give you a brief summary of 
what the camera system was about uh, and asked you that uh, you know if you would uh, consider approving for a purchase for a bus. Yes. Yeah, sure. Now, you're going to have cameras on the stop on and on the front of the bus. Yeah, I've got the same camera. I, I've got seven. There's uh, seven cameras on the bus. I've got two on the stop arm. One faces forward, one faces back. I've got one that's facing out the front window of the bus so that I can see the kids when they cross. I've got one that'll be facing on the driver and down to the stairwell. And then in the back of the bus, there's one that will be facing forward and then one in the front that faces backwards so that we can see what the kids are doing on the bus. That, that is a system, that is a camera that system. Is a camera that's system. one camera system. That, that's actually a set, uh, well, it's actually an eight camera system with seven cameras. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, so it's yeah. a whole system of cameras. Yeah, it's a whole okay. system of cameras. cameras. Okay. Yes. And it has a, a unit that you pull out, uh, like the hardware on the computer. So when I pull that out, I can take it over to the office. I can put it on a laptop or on a computer, and I can see what had happened during that time, that time frame of the bus was moving. I can set it up so that when the key is started on the bus, it automatically comes on. Uh, it has the time, the date, the place, the location, and when the key is turned off, I can set it up to keep playing for 15 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, whatever we want to do. Uh, so that a bus driver, or whatever, if the key's turned off, it still records things that's happening. So why 29? Huh? Why 29? Because the 29 is the cameras that I had that had the VHS uh, the system in it that doesn't work. Oh, but the other, the, the other, the, other buses the other buses have a newer system. They have uh, the majority of them have a three camera system. They have one on the driver and the two in the compartment. Uh, but I want to work to upgrade those in the future, where they have the stop arm and they have the camera coming out the front. Mr. Governor, sir, you mentioned something about reimbursement. Yeah. How much of the system we get? Uh, how much reimbursement? My understanding with transportation, we'll get 95% of that money back. Uh, won't, we won't get it. This coming year will be the following year. Okay. One question. There's on here that pricing does not include installation. Uh, there's a $2,500 or roughly about that price for their technician to come out. Uh, they wanted to charge $300 a, a bus essentially to come in and, and put those in for us. I felt like it was better for us to take my people over here, train them so that they would be certified to put that in so that if we, next year when we have new ones, I've already got people in place to do that. Yeah, train people. Yes, yeah, so I'd, I'd rather do that than, than us pay somebody else to come in and do what we can do. I see that. And then there's another price on that for, uh, it's actually a monitor so that when they install uh, the systems on the bus that they can adjust it and make sure so that's part of the installation package. Do you have any more questions? Yeah, have you seen one of these in operation? Yes, I have. Actually, uh, I looked at several different ones and when I went to the quarterly uh, transportation meeting, I talked to several other uh, uh, directors throughout the state and this was the one that they recommended. Uh, so I called the, the company, had the lady come in and do a presentation for us. Uh, this is by far the easiest to use, and, and uh, I won't necessarily say that it's the most economical, but it's, it meets our, our, our needs. This is not the Cadillac system, uh, but it's not the worst either. One more question, sir. The current ones we have is VHS. They're reused or whatever. Once these are done, is that still occur, or is this a permanent file that would be available? This file uh, can be, uh, it goes for three weeks to a month. It can be downloaded onto another computer or saved if there's something that happens. Otherwise, it goes and pops back over it. Uh, the VHS ones that we have on those buses now last about two days, and then it tapes over those. Uh, but uh, another neat thing about, about these cameras is if I have an incident on a bus, say a flight or whatever, uh, we don't uh, show that to just anybody that comes in, but I can black out everything around them and show a picture of your child that may be doing this or that, and so we don't see other students' faces on it, which is pretty cool. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
I have a comment. After seeing that video, it made me sick to my stomach. It doesn't and Even if uh, we weren't reimbursed, we had to have hot dog sales. We need to get that. I agree. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Joe Parsons, the energy manager. manager. Okay, I'll do this really briefly. I know how bad it is. Marsh kick off. Um, this will be the last time uh, I, I talk to you all about the energy program while we're still under contract with uh, energy education. Um, and rather than do the, the typical stuff that I normally do, I get some different reports for you. Um, we've been averaging saving about um, a quarter million dollars a year in the energy program. And I told you before in some of the other presentations that uh, that my intention was to try to hit a million dollars in savings over a four-year time. We're on track to do that, um, although I'm not real sure how the, the opening of the New Heart School and the closure of the two schools that we have down there will affect the savings because obviously once we close those two facilities, uh, you know, it's going to skew the data a little bit. And, the, some of the stuff that's going to be reflected in savings is going to be because we turned off and killed us completely. What I wanted to really draw your attention to, um, I hand wrote some things on two different graphs here. One says uh, KWH and one says MCF. Most of our savings comes from electricity and gas. We save very little on water and sewer here other than through uh, leakage and things like that. The first page of that graph shows the base year. That was the year prior to starting this program, and it shows how much we actually used in that year. For gas, it was 24,133 uh, MCFs, which is how they measure on our billing. And uh, for electricity, it was 8,448,888 kilowatt hours. These figures come directly off of the, off the bill. The following and subsequent, I'm not going to go through all of them, I'm just going to briefly let you look through. Each year, it's year by year, it shows you how much we reduce our consumption, our usage, in each one of those subsequent years. Uh, through the first 43 months of the program, um, our total reduction on gas has been 11,515 MCFs, and on electricity, 7,750,902 kilowatt hours. That's actual reduction, and uh, to give you an idea of, of scale, I think uh, we were at one time paying about $14 an MCF for gas, and right at about 10 cents a kilowatt hour for electricity, anywhere from 8 to 10. If you looked at the paper last, uh, last couple of weeks, uh, Mountaineer Gas has put in for another base, base rate increase for the Public Service Commission, Thanks, and the electric company is getting two a year and a half for the last two years. They will again next year. So all of these figures that we are reducing is money that we would have been paying out, and you know at the higher rates. So that's just uh, kind of where we're at. The last thing I wanted to talk to you about, um, like I said, I'm making this real brief is the Energy Star program. Uh, that is a national program through the uh, EPA. It rates buildings across the country and compares them all school buildings against school buildings from Alaska to Florida and California to Maine. Um, we, last year we had seven of our nine educational buildings were Energy Star labeled buildings, which means they were in the top 25% compared to everybody in the country. Uh, this year I'm happy to say that eight of our nine buildings have qualified for Energy Star label. Um, in addition to that, um, we also qualified as a district. We've, we've reduced 28.3% of our energy consumption and Energy Star recognize you as a leader, which is kind of a rare thing within, within uh, the Energy Star program. So we will qualify for leader status this year, and uh, we were going to be also qualified for a top performer, which is 
different school districts that as a district is in the top 25 percent uh, but we had some snafus on, on the paperwork that I submitted and it dropped us two points so we're, we're under it but we're still working with energy ed and we're trying to get that number back up but uh, that's a that's a pretty big feather in our cap your staff I want to tell the board and Ms. Lucas the staff in this county does a phenomenal <coughs> job with the energy program. Uh, there are a few individual exceptions with people that are resistant to the program, but lock, stock, and barrel, your administrators, your professional staff, and your service personnel all are cooperative with this, and, and we have achieved quite a bit in the energy reduction phase of this through their efforts. And that's pretty much all I've got to say about it, if you all have any questions. Which building doesn't qualify? Lincoln County High School. Um, and I really don't know why because, well, I don't have complete control of that building yet, but I'm going, going too soon when we get the new uh, computer system in. It was built as a green school. You would think it would be an automatic qualifier, but they say when you build a green school to bring the reduction down when you're already supposed to be right. energy efficient, is a harder task and you don't reflect as big a savings. That's part of it. And then we've got some other issues over there that hopefully we can get under control. I'm hoping we don't face the same problem when Hearts opens up. Hearts will not reflect on our Energy Star or the Energy Program for the first year, the new Hearts Pre-K-8, because they'll be building a base year for that school to compare to. All of these energy reduction comparisons that you look at compare back to the base year of 2007-2008 uh, before we started using the program. So all your comparisons are to what you were doing prior to using the program. And you know, with hearts, it'll open under the program, so uh, it may be uh, you know, hard to show some savings up there initially, but we'll, we'll work on it. Any other questions? Thanks, Jim. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Gary Tony, Old Town Heroes Box. First, I want to, uh, my legs are a little stiff here. Yeah. <laughs> I sat out there too long. Uh, I want to thank you for allowing me to be on the, the agenda. And actually, the, the idea for me asking permission to have a boxing competition at the high school came from the student at the high school, Robert Porter. He boxes at some of the events I have at the Charleston Civic Center. Um, start out by telling you a little story about some students from Lincoln County. Last February, came to Charleston to box in. At that time, we were operating under the name of Books for Books Boxing. But we have since changed the name to Hometown Heroes Boxing. But Lincoln County does not have any organized boxing in the county. But a few students come into Charleston and train at some of the gyms in Charleston. Others just train at home on their own, do the best they can do. Last February in our state championships, several students came into Charleston to box. And uh, we always announce, we announce them as attending at such and such school. Uh, we don't, which we don't say they're representing the school because it is not a school sport. But we keep keep track of the points, the wins and the losses, who wins the championships, who are the runners up. And Lincoln County surprised everyone, the Lincoln County students did, by winning the team championship. They defeated a more experienced team from uh, the students attending Riverside High School. But nevertheless, they won the team championship. And uh, Robert Porter asked me if we could have a boxing competition in Lincoln County. The only place that we could come up with was the high school. So uh, I'm here to ask permission 
to have a competition at the high school. I have met with uh, Mr. Sachs, and he just told me that I would have to come before the board. Uh, the bad thing about the table of contents in the report that I do is that I forgot the number of the pages, so you have to come count the pages. But the main part, of, the main part of the proposal was the first few pages, uh, where I explained revenue sources and expenses. Uh, I went over some of this with uh, Mr. Sachs. The, what we proposed to be the, the concession rights would stay with the school, that we get 100% of the concessions. Now I, to back up a little bit, I front, I would front all expenses. The school would not have any, incur any expenses at all as far as the promotion of the event. I would hope to recoup the expenses from the gate receipts, that is the people paying to get in the city back. Uh, and if, if uh, we didn't recover the expenses on the top of my pocket, the school has no liability. Well, have no liability. Have a question. Yes. So I, I was kind of going to read through this. Um, what we would be providing is the venue, basically. That's what we would be providing to you is the venue, but the high school so that you can have the event. Right. And that would be all that we would be providing to this, you know, this actually the venue so that you can hold the event. Exactly. Correct? Exactly. You got, as far as the insurance is concerned, insurance is taken care of? Yes. We we are members of USA Boxing, the yeah. National Governing Body of Africa Boxing, which is under the jurisdiction of the U.S. Olympic Committee. Uh, in the back, next to the last page is a just a sample uh, certificate of insurance. When, when we get our sanction from USA Boxing, we are automatically covered with uh, liability insurance. And we would name the school and the board, for that matter, if you so, so desire, uh, as a third party insured. And, and we would be provided with a certificate of insurance to show that you were covered that the school was covered and the board. Um, so there's no, uh, I mean, the school is covered. So, I would like to make a suggestion. We're sort of pressed for time, and I'm, and I'm not sure I can absorb all this at one time. Right, I understand. I understand. And, and I think there's several things we need to consider in reviewing this, so I'd like to recommend that we simply bring it up in another session direction. Would that be acceptable to everyone? Put it on the agenda. Put it on the agenda for the okay. next meeting. Yeah, because this is just too much to try. Uh, well, I'm <laughs> That's okay. I'm just going to get the ball rolling if we can. Yeah. Okay. And it's a let me big program for the school or let me for the ask, students. Let me ask you a question. You, you spoke with Mr. Sachs. And how, what was Mr. Sachs' feelings about the uh, about having the uh, uh, an event at the school? Well, my impression was that, that, that he liked the idea. You know, we, 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 we were talking about uh, the income and the expenses, and you know, I told him that he could get 100% of the concessions. And uh, obviously, we would like some money for our organization to keep, keep the organization going. And uh, he suggested that a 50-50 uh, split on the net profit from the gate receipts. So, you know, in, in talking to him, I, I thought that it was my impression that he uh, he liked the idea. Where do you go to? I don't have a gym. Uh, we have there are gyms in Charleston. Uh, there's one on Big Avenue called the Doghouse Gym. Uh, there's, there's one up on Summer Street. One at the Charleston Recreation Center. Uh, there's about three gyms in Charleston. But uh, some of these kids out there just train on their own. And, you know, I would like for this to lead to a, uh, a boxing club 
be informed in Lincoln County because uh, we've got some very talented kids here. And uh, that's what I do is I, I like to introduce the kids to the boxing, amateur boxing. I've been involved in them my life. I, I made a living as an accountant for Columbia Gas. But this is all volunteer work. And I've spent a lot of money out of my pocket for, for many years. And, uh, I don't want to think of a larger time, but uh, I'm currently the president of the West Virginia Association of USA Boxing. I was uh, the national president of USA Boxing from, from 1996 to 2000. On the Olympic, U.S. Olympic Committee Board of Directors during that same period. And uh, the Olympic Committee selected me to be the uh, team leader for boxing, the uh, Olympic boxing team in like Sydney, Australia. So, so I do have a solid boxing background. Uh, we take all safety precautions. Don't think about professional boxing that you see on TV when you think about our program. We're safety oriented. The boxers wear headgear. We use, uh, in our program, we use 12 ounce gloves. Professional boxers use eight ounce gloves. They don't hurt really hit you. So we, we're very protective of the boxers. If a kid takes a hard blow, the referee will immediately give him an eight count and evaluating evaluate the boxer while he's giving the eight count. Uh, if he looks a little shaky, he stops. So, so we're very safety oriented. I, I can't guarantee you that there would not be an injury. But I don't know. Uh, it's been. Some, quite some time since I've seen an amateur boxer actually knocked unconscious. We stopped the battle before it gets to that point. It's better to be, uh, to stop one too, too soon than too late. Do you have any other questions? I just had a request, maybe yeah. Ms. Lucas could get with counsel and just review the insurance coverage just so we don't have that. And our board policy. Okay. So we can use it. And if you need to uh, check with our national headquarters in Colorado Springs, so I can get the phone number and everything for you. If you feel better about calling them. Do you have any, anybody with medical training on site while this boxing? During the boxing? Yes. Yes, the boxer, there must be a physician Boxers must be examined by a physician before they box. There's a physician seated at ringside throughout the bounce. After each bout, the boxers are examined once again by the doctor just when they come out of the ring. So, so yeah, we, we take all precautions. Another question. Um, are these students over 18? And if not, do they have to have consent from their parents to? Uh, well, we have different ages, but, but yeah, yes, they have to have consent from their parents if they're under 18. We have an entry form that the parents have to sign. They've got to be registered with USA Boxing, uh, which also requires the parents sitting there if they're under 18. Do y'all have any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Tucker. Thanks for coming. Uh, thank you for for allowing me to make the presentation. Thank you. Rip it down. Come on down. Man. Thank you. Appreciate you being able to be here tonight. Um, a group of us in the county and outside of the county have been working for a while on a pilot program, actually two pilot programs, one for pregnant teens and one for parenting teens. Wanted to talk about that tonight, present it to you, answer questions. Um, we've got some folks who came tonight uh, who are here uh, both in support and if you have specific questions to areas that they would be involved in the project. So we'll start with Lena. If you oh. guys just want to yeah. introduce Hello. yourself. I'm Lena Burdett. I'm with United Way of the River Cities, which serves Lincoln County. And my part of this program is a program called Success by Six, 
which focus on the very young child to make sure that they are um, with their brain development and literacy issues and uh, especially with young parents that they understand what's going on with a young child and how to raise it correctly so that when they start kindergarten they will be ready to begin a successful school career. Good evening, my name is Laura Gilliam. I'm the Executive Director of United Way of the River Cities. And um, Success by Six and the Financial Stability Partnership of the River Cities, which Ed um, is with, are two initiatives that operate out of the United Way of the River Cities office. Um, our focus is on um, prevention, trying to keep people from getting into tough situations, but also addressing issues and, and the place where people might find themselves. So we do a lot of um, fundraising and putting money back into the community, including Lincoln County, but we also do a lot of collaborative work. So this kind of effort that is going on here is, is something that we wholeheartedly support. I'm April Abraham. I'm with the West Virginia Birth to Three program, um, and we work with children under the age of three who have developmental delays or disabilities. I'm here today for moral support mostly, so. <laughs> um, I'm Carrie Smith. I'm the social worker at Lincoln County High School. I work with the young mothers and the teen moms, um, teen pregnant girls. Um, just to help the, link them to the services that they need to be successful as parents, but also to stay in school. I'm Ned Davis. I'm the Financial Stability Partnership Coordinator for the United Way of the River Cities, and my specialty is uh, financial literacy. I utilize a couple of different programs. I utilize the uh, um, FDIC's Money Smart and the Federal Reserve's uh, Building Wealth. Um, as we began meeting, um, we were drawn by the fact that we had a very high uh, teenage pregnancy rate. <clears throat> I've got a little folder that has some stats in it. I'm not going to go through all of them, but um, the most recent kids count, the 2010 kids count, our teen birth rate in Lincoln County is 71.2 births per thousand girls, young women ages 15 to 19, whereas the state's rate is 46.6, so we're much higher than the state's rate. Um, West Virginia is much higher than national rates, um, so that fact in, in and of itself got us together to start talking about this issue. One of the things we were especially concerned about is keeping girls who get pregnant in school. Um, often, when a girl gets pregnant, uh, she may go on home, homebound and never come back to school. The other thing we found as we talked to other counties is a lot of times the stressors of having the baby after the young woman has the baby, it's just too much to deal with uh, and they, they drop out of school. So we're, we've been concerned about that. We're also concerned about providing uh, young women and young men with information, with services, with skills so that they can be better decision makers, so they can do a better job raising their kids, and so we can sort of break this cycle of children having children in Lincoln County. Uh, there was a 2010 report that Marshall did for a joint legislative committee that talked about the fact that teen mothers are much more likely to deliver preterm, to have low birth weight babies, to have developmental delays, and to have childhood health problems. Uh, one of the things that we're hoping to do with this program is to actually do screenings for the mothers and screening for the babies so we can catch some of these things as they happen. We've got people like April, or birth to sick, birth to three, that deal with developmental delays. And um, in addition to having modules where we be presenting information, another part of the curriculum or whatever you want to call it, would be roundtables with organizations in the community that provide services. So we have groups like Birth to Three that would be there and other organizations that could explain to parents what they actually can provide to young people. 
Um, another thing that came out of the Marshall study is the, the fact that um, there's a significant relationship between young maternal age and the likelihood of child abuse. And so that's another thing we're going to be addressing in this is helping young people understand uh, abusive situations, how you try to stay out of those, what you do if you find yourself in one. Um, other research tells us that, of course, teen mothers are more likely to drop out of school and that uh, 8 to 12 years after their births, children who are born to unmarried teenage high school dropouts are 10 times to more likely to be, live, to be living in poverty. So we'd like to try to change some of those things. Um, there's a page that talks about logistical questions. We thought it was important to provide the board, the school system, uh, some ideas about how logistically we go about something like this. The idea for the pilot is that we would do one day a month programs for pregnant teens and one day a month programs for parenting teens. And these youth would uh, be out of their classroom for that one day. The programs would be held at the high school. They'd still be responsible for making up all their work. But the pilot is built around that sort of framework of how we do it. Um, the youth that would be involved would be recruited by Carrie as the school social worker. She'd work with them. The folks who are doing organizing the program would not necessarily even know the names of the kids who might be involved. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, it was all voluntary. Uh, parents would need to sign off to allow their children to, to be in the program. Um, <clears throat> we talked about transportation. When we're transporting the babies, the Lincoln County school buses are not really equipped to keep bringing babies. So Tri River Transit, which is equipped to transport babies, is willing to do the transportation for this. Um, Brian Sachs is willing to reschedule classes that are currently in the parenting classroom, which is right off the commons. So we would use that room for these sessions. Uh, it's a big room, it's got stoves, it's got the ability to, to take care of the needs with the kids there. The basic curriculum is going to work around the Right From the Start program, uh, which is a very broad-based curriculum. What we're going to do then is we've got a number of other organizations in the county and outside the county who are willing to participate, and they would come in and they do modules that would complement what Right From the Start is doing. We would do evaluations so that we learn both what the people who are participating think they're getting out of it, and also we want them to be able to tell us what kind of things we're not covering uh, so that we could use the evaluation process to sort of move the program forward. Um, there have been talks about early Head Start doing things at the high school. Uh, there have been discussions. Ryan thinks that it would be a great place to do a, a a child care center and a child care academy where students could actually get certified in those areas. We think that the kind of evaluations we could get from doing this project could give us information that could help lead to grant funding and, and things like that. Um, we are going to have infants there on the day that we're doing the parenting classes. We think it's real important for parents to bring their infants. Uh, starting points here in the county will provide what they call pack and play, infant beds, or sort of portable cribs that would come in so that you, know, you wouldn't have to hold your child the whole time when it got tired. We'd also provide other supplies, diapers, and those kind of things. Um, I said that there would be community resource people who would come in for these round tables. Uh, one of the best things about this is that all the costs are co covered by the agency. There's no cost to the Board of Education. So it's encouraging that we've got people and agencies in the county that are willing to do this. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, the the uh, next page talks about the five days that we would do the pilot for pregnant teens. Those would all be in Tuesday on Tuesdays once a month. The pilot for parenting teens would all be on Thursdays. Um, the bottom has some of the various agencies that are willing to be presenters. The next page has the potential pilot modules. Uh, 
it, it t tells you the module, who the presenter is, what their organization is, and whether the module would be for the pregnancy group or the parenting team group. Um, there are lots of organizations and lots of different kind of modules. We're expecting that as this rolls out and we learn more that these modules could change. We might put more emphasis on one than on the other, just depending on what we learn from the girls themselves. Uh, and the last two pages are the programs for the first two months. Um, it shows you what <coughs> modules we scheduled, who the presenters are for the January and February sessions for both the pregnant teens and the parent. So I know that's a lot of stuff, but just a little bit of information about it. If you got any questions, we'll try to answer it. It's a very comprehensive curriculum. The, the thought, we thought it was really important rather than just having it be focused solely on right from the start, but since we have these other agencies who are willing to help, that we incorporate them into the right from the start curriculum. So if you look where it says the potential pilot modules, a lot of those are the right from the start modules that are already out there, but then we've got some other organizations to do things that are sometimes similar and sometimes complementary that we try to leave in there. But as we go through, for sure, we would do what we've done for the, you know, the first two things that we have those modules. I guess I'm thinking you're asking if you could see a curriculum that had the objectives and the, if there were content standard objectives that would meet those okay, kind of things. <laughs> yeah, I, I think. For most of these, we could. For surely, for the ones that work from the right from the start. You'll we'll choose from these. This is not a list that, for sure, is the list all this for sure. The list for sure that we know are for the first, for the last two pages, which are the first two months. Which draw from that bigger list. This is just potential. That, that's a potential, and that's those are the ones we've got commitments for, and so that's sort of the drivers from that. And I think the other thing that's going to happen is, as the teens tell us, "Gosh, we really wish you'd do a section on, I don't know, something that we hadn't thought of." We will certainly try to provide that. There's going to be a leadership group that if our two, in, in the, the people who are doing the right from the start, both of them have the flu, so neither of them are able to be here. One is Dean Meadows from Huntington, and the other is Janet Siegel, who's at the Lincoln Primary Care Center. They're both trained people in the right from the start program. So they're going to be the core kind of folks, but together as this unrolls, we'll be sitting down and talking about and trying to decide, okay, what other kinds of things need to be added. Rick, thanks for coming in. Hey, you're and I'm and, 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 for, and thanks for getting the program. You know, well, it was you know, you know the need. I think everyone knows the need. I was just both very moved and very encouraged by once we said we want to try to do this thing. We want you people who can help us to come to the table. How many people came to the table? It was just very gratifying that we've got this kind of support for us. That's what I wanted to comment on, uh, was the number yes. of um, people, the agencies that were at the table and willing to uh, collaborate and work together. It was uh, quite impressive. And we were appreciative of with both our <coughs> superintendent and our assistant superintendent were at the table too, helping us brainstorm. Okay, thank you. I guess it's my assumption that you all will make a decision so that 
maybe at your next meeting so that we could begin as we wanted to go toward January or this one. We'll put it on the next agenda. Okay. And that's for only in January. So January, 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 January. January. Okay. We have a meeting scheduled January 9th. So <laughs> that's good. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Greg. Thank you all for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being so long. Sorry. <laughs> I make a motion that we go into executive session to deliberate. All those in favor to go into executive session, please say aye. 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 All opposed. Are you up there, Sean? Yeah, they're they went for a power okay. walk. They go for a walker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starving. Okay, we are in our administrative section. A says the following adult students to ride the bus during the 2011-2012 school year, as you can see them there. Uh, B is the school volunteers and chaperones. And uh, for West Hamlin Elementary, a guy by Middle School Hearts and Duval. C is a contract with Chuck Huss to provide orientation and mobility training for students during the 2011-2012 school year. Paid for by the special ed funds. Any questions on the attachment? D is to uphold the recommendation of the superintendent to for, uh, approve a 30 day suspension without pay for a service personnel effective December 1st for violation of the employee code of conduct. You all have read A through D. We have a motion. I move that we accept A through D. I'll second. All those in favor to approve items A through D in the uh, administrative section, please say aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have. We are now in our finance section. <laughs> Say she probably put it in any If she had any sense, she was oh, she the CPR. Uh, I'm writing. <laughs> I'm not sure she went. I'm writing those. Do we, did she have handout? She left a handout. She showed me a handout she was going to give us. It was on the yellow page. Oh, I can't hear you. She's with Brenda, the lady. Nancy. Nancy. Not Nancy. Nancy. Not the one who's on oh. the transcript. Right. The Republican. It's already. <laughs> Is that camera on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. And I'm, I'm letting her on my way. When my dad was in here, there were the only two Republicans. In there. <laughs> Keep uh, talking, Gabe. Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> it's <laughs> fine. I don't care. It's all right. I can see the headlines now. The Lord's friend. The Clarence? <laughs> Start with you. There you go. I know. Where are they? I think they're just in the, the room. No, they were expecting someone to come get them. No, they showed up and walked out of here. Didn't they? Brenda, no, they're no, in. Oh. These were all we're in our so Is this for a fine What do you do? What is this? These are the handouts that. Birdie had? No, five years behind. Brenda has. Oh. Oh, oh well, we're not ready. Are you not? No, just go ahead and have <laughs> Okay. So I thought that's what you wanted. No, no, we're going to. Um, yeah, we're in a finance finance. Uh, I'm just finance you know what I'm saying? A is a schedule of envelope for voices total of one million nine hundred seven uh, one million nine hundred and seventy thousand four hundred and seventy eight dollars and twenty three cents. And B is a purchase of twenty nine mobile digital video recorder cameras for the bus. For the bus system. We have a motion on the floor. I'll second. We have a second. All those in favor to approve the filing section, please say aye. 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 All those, the ayes have Now we're in our personnel section. We have the personnel schedule. It's followed. And this is a revised schedule. 
Concerns, and we are at the Hearts property and Old Farrellsburg Elementary D. Let me put that on there. Concerns, Hearts Property and Old Farrellsburg Elementary D. Fast up and put this on the agenda. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a little brave. Uh, the deeds for the Hearts Intermediate and Hearts Primary, uh, they neither contain a removal version clause, it's unlike the Farrellsburg D, which states the property, if the property is no longer used for community center, it reverts back to the board. It's a statute do not have a reversion clause. Which ones don't have? Hearts Intermediate and Hearts Primary neither have a reversion clause. Right, Brenda? Right. I have the deeds here. Meaning that they do not revert back to the original owner. Yeah. Okay. And it's no longer used as a school. So then revert back to the original. So oh, I'm sorry, what is that? Yes. Yeah. Right. Uh, revert back to the other shoes. Oh, I don't know what to say. They, they, they like, clung up. Yes, right. sir. Yes, that's, that's sadly. <laughs> <laughs> 
the, I think what she indicated us was just the gym. Wasn't it? Oh, the gymnasium, the lockers, the locker. that's associated with the What gym. about the ball field? Also, the ball, the ball field, field yes. and then the, yes, annex, ball. the annexes that are out there adjacent to the ball field, uh, including the concession stand. Uh, right, it's right beside of the, the baseball or softball field is where those two buildings are. And that's what she had indicated. Well, that's what I thought. I mean, I, I, I wasn't sure about the kitchen. Maybe if you had a concession stand, you wouldn't have to have access to it. i just like to see something where the uh, the school, the Hearts Pre-K-8 school, would have priority for usage for activities there and be able to use it. And uh, if it's possible to uh, have the uh, county commission to have the facility and us pay them a fee similar to what we do at Hamlin, that's what I'd like to do. But, once again, with us, with the school, being able to utilize the certain areas of the, you know, the gym and the ball field and all that as they need. Could, could you like give them a schedule of, uh, like when we would meet the gym? Well, I think the principal, they have to do yeah. that. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. let them, I mean, they could use the gym also as long as they took care of it. Well, yeah, I'm just saying I'd like to see us, our pre-K-8 school, have priority because yeah, just like the girls and boys basketball in the same time, you know, they may have to work out a system. I hate seeing kids coming home so late at night. And if they have a way that they can maybe, you know, you know, alternate or something where somebody practicing at the middle school building or the pre-K building, and the others are at the old high school building, uh, and then maybe switch back and forth. It's something to keep these kids from being out so late at night and utilizing both facilities. So that's, we just, that's going to be very convenient. Having two gyms is going to be very convenient in basketball season. Buddy league, basketball, boys, girls, you have you could have simultaneous. I mean the practice would be simultaneous. That's what I mean. It's Instead it's of really one of them waiting until the other one gets finished right. and then after they all leave, then we got the so buddy links coming in at nine o'clock at night. You know? I mean that's a that's a great situation. So I just that's all I'm saying. I just like to see for us to have some kind of an agreement to where, you know, the school would have priority usage based on whatever schedule there is right. would be and then yeah, I'd like to see the kids get dibs. I don't, you know, they need to have, uh, I'd like to see them have priority. You know, just like whenever they have a football game or whatever, you don't know what's, if you line a building out to somebody, they may have a, something scheduled on the field. I mean, you know, they have a football game in the ball uh, or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I really don't see that even whoever is in the county commission, whatever they're doing, I don't we see the, them out. ever having a problem. With no, we work it out with the lines, yeah. but we can work it out. Well, that's what I mean. you just yeah, it's, but it would be, it's nice to have it spelled out. Right, exactly. Yeah. Well, there's an understanding, there's no other, misunderstanding. Any okay. other activity the school would like to have. Right. I mean, right. It would be more like a, we have to do a memorandum of understanding. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I don't think it would be a problem at all. Um, where are we at now? The new hearts? Or is that what, is that what we want to get right now? The new hearts, PK through 8? That's on the, the next mm -hmm. item of concern. Uh, I know that there were uh, some uh, concerns um, if we have, if the space of the new parts pre-K-8 was sufficient. Um, and as Mr. Minkiff and I did uh, some research uh, looking at uh, the numbers um, when the new facility was um, proposed, there were 405 students, and that was in the needs project. And that was, um, I guess, was submitted in, uh, to the SBA in October. Um, and actually, when they did some calculations or whatever, uh, the project was submitted at 440, but uh, Jim, when we talked to Mr. Ferguson the other night, did he give you some? Uh, 447 was the uh, projected enrollment. Okay. Thing, but they used the final projection when they built the school, or designed the school. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and right now, we currently have 447 students there, but last year was quite a, I want to say it was an anomaly when you look at their history. 
because we had to add a, a new uh, pre-K class and a new kindergarten. Now, as those students move forward, what our projected enrollment next year is back to 427 um, students. So, we did not see and do not see a, um, a situation where there is not uh, adequate space uh, for the students. Uh, we also talked with Mr. Um, Ferguson regarding playgrounds. Way back in the initial design, uh, they did have two playgrounds, correct, Mr. Recap, in the, in the uh, initial design, but the SBA did not approve or? Well, at that time, uh, it was a one full, full design. One. Uh -huh. it, 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 it would have spanned the entire piece of property across where the culvert is now, where the graveyard is located. So when we ran into, when they ran into issues with the, the cemetery and they couldn't build over that ravine, then they had to go to a two-story design, which squeezed that piece of property and that prevented them from being able to have two different playgrounds. So they had to go to one playground design at that point. But what he did, he, he did express several times, of, you know, that, that there was a committee involved uh, from that community and they were very well aware of, of the change of the design when it occurred. Also, he said there was staff on that committee and <clears throat> he had, uh, I guess, the staff being part of the design was more prevalent in this particular project than any other that he had been on. He said that was very much, uh, you know, had, had, it had been <clears throat> requested and they had definitely honored that request. And everything, at every juncture, there was involvement as far as the community as well as the um, staff. Uh, the staff was very much involved in purchasing the furniture, uh, Again, more so than any, and he felt that uh, they were aware of, of every change at every time. Um, you know, as I said to him, I was not in on that those initial, you know, so I couldn't really answer questions because when the Daily Mail <laughs> called me that with questions, um, I had, you know, had some information to give them because they had picked up on some story that was in the journal, I think. And uh, when I get, was giving him the information, he said, well, really, I don't feel like there is a story, you know. So he followed up with, you know, what's going on in Lincoln County? I said, all positive things. So, um, and as far as I know, parking was a, was a question. There are 74 parking spots right now. Um, and that is including um, three of them being handicapped, uh, but we currently have 56 employees. Uh, we have looked at, Mr. Smith uh, was there, um, looked at additional uh, areas where uh, there's parking. We spoke with Mr. Ferguson, uh, Mr. McKiff, Mr. Smith and I, um, requesting uh, we would love to see not, not just gravel the paved if they're and they seem to think there's funding that's already there uh, you know they just have to get permission uh, through the um, SBA to utilize it for that yeah, uh, of course. yeah we're talking about those how many teachers 56 uh, that, well that's including uh, all, all of the service all, 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 all of the employees. Man, I was going to ask you out of your ear. Um, we have 74. Is that is that usually the, the ratio? Is that how it usually works? I mean, is that what is that customary? Is what I'm trying to say. Trying um, to say. With the school building authority, they don't uh, approve a lot of fluff unless the counties are coming up with some money to help with 
some, I guess, some additional things, and, and we haven't with this project very little. I mean, we've got a million dollar run, and that's, that's been the extent of our contribution from the county. But my question is, and I know that we're going to have excess parking at, the, at LCJ because of all the students that are driving and things like that. And like, I mean, like at Hamlin, at Duval, at Guyon Valley. I mean, is that, what I'm trying to say, is it complement? Is it, is it complementary to those particular areas? It, it seems to be common that you don't get as much space as you need sometimes. And, uh, as far as uh, luxury parking or additional parking, uh, I think that's kind of common. Would have fallen. What I'm saying is, it would have fallen in line with Duval, Guyon Valley, and oh, and okay, I see what you understand. Saying. What I'm saying. I mean, it would have, is, it, is it similar to the other school? It's common. I, I think you know. it's for the, the for the number of students. I think it's very similar. And then other faculty members and the, the amount of extra spaces that that are there. As long as you seventy four parking spaces, including three handicapped. And then we have fifty six total work <coughs> There are guidelines they must follow I mean, that the SBA provides when it's when they're building a school as far as parking is concerned. Right. But I was I mean, I was trying to find the you know, if it was more, if it was excessively, I mean, if it was less, it's comparable. if it's comparable to the other schools that we have. Well, yeah, but, but, but we have a problem with the other schools, too. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, Hamlin has a real problem. Hamlin has sure. probably a worse problem than Duval, and Duval has a problem. Well, you know, when all those teachers park, there's not a lot of parking for parents and, and uh, or, or nor and, uh, but you also have to look at the number of, of students at Duval as compared to Harts Creek, as compared as at Hamlin, look at the amount of, of, of faculty members that we have there too. I mean, that's what I'm saying is, I mean, it's comparable. Right. Very comparable. Okay. If they've had some type of activity during the day and you've got that many employees there, there's no space along Route 10 to park. Right. We, we were looking at, you know where they have that already paved and Mark, it was all of that space behind there that Mr. Meekip and Mr. Smith and I talked to them about, you know, and it's easy to gravel. I would like for them to use that money and pave it as well. Like overflow that parking for like a van. That's from the project funds. Right. Was from saying. the project funds, was that? Yes, that's yes, correct. There, there was money, and that's what I asked. Uh, but he's able to pay more spaces. Yes. And now, whether they let us have it or not, you know, I, I look at it as it's our money. Why would we not be, you know? That's what we asked for. We also talked to them about that incline, and they were supposed to have they, have they completed that payment? For sure. They, they worked on the part of the uh, level part that hadn't been paid. They finished that, but to my knowledge, they still haven't done the incline, the, the entrance. They still haven't done it. They were, haven't paved it. Paved it. What are you saying? Haven't paved it? Well, they they haven't it paved it and they haven't brought it up to uh, where it needs to be. So and the buses don't crash. It's been a long time since I've been on the They have, um, they were in the uh, discussion with the general contractor even at that day when we spoke with him and that was, um, and as of today, that portion still hadn't been solved exactly who was going to pay for what. Okay. And that's, that's between them. You know, but we have just asked them to make sure it gets done prior to uh, the school opening, the buses, um, you know, being able to go down that area that they are supposed to be. We've also looked at, let's say it isn't, we've looked at the alternative uh, about them coming in at the other end and, and going up and turning on the paved part and, and coming back down in front of the school and dropping the children off, you know, for a period of time. But it'd still be off the road. It's not on the road at all, you know, not on the main highway until they get that fixed. Um, let's see. Um, did we get the 
They're way. supposed to have that off. What is it? The sign on outside of the building, pre K dash A, it looks like prick. P R E K. That's one word. Playground equipment has been purchased. They've already delivered it, right? The playground? Yes. The playground or preschool. Or preschool. For the preschool. Or preschool. For the preschool. Also, uh, the uh, county commission has given them more playground equipment, uh, but it's for smaller children. You know, we're still looking at uh, trying to uh, get some funding or something uh, to purchase other equipment for older children. Of course, we did talk to Ms. Stingis about that. We wanted her to um, explore some other avenues. Right now would be a good time to see grants mm -hmm. the Yes. 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 Exactly what the population of students would look like when the school was built, that, that that room may have to be used as a classroom, and right now we are going to use it as a fifth grade classroom. For, the, for this year? Right, for this yeah, year. Because okay, so we have adequate space for all the students in classroom, and next year when fall comes, you're anticipating we're going to have maybe a little bit more, or a little flexibility, a little yes. bit more space. Yes, because we will not have two, we will not have three pre K. Classrooms. We anticipate only two. You're saying with kindergarten as well, right? Yeah, yes. Yes, because those those students move up. So next year will be. Yes. Mm -hmm. Can I ask one request, please? Um, when after Miss Dingus and her gang decide that they're finished going through the building and getting everything they want and all that, 
could we make it successful and see Dane here? I'm not, I'm not volunteering, I'll leave that up to you. But could we have a time when all the other schools are advised that you know, the Hearts uh, staff have gone through and gotten everything they want? Could we advise all of the other schools to set a date maybe when they can come up after you know, school and go through there and get things that are not going to be utilized? Because in the past, what we've seen happen in other places, the scavenger kind of come in, but I'd like to see us give our other school people a chance to come up. Maybe, Danny, you could, you Set know. schedule. Yeah. yeah, and they could go up there yes. because, you know, a lot of these people, they need a filing cabinet, they need a table, and they may be available there. We've already done that. 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 We've already going somewhere else uh, rather than purchasing. Um, Mr. Daly has looked at some of the furniture. Uh, you know, uh, as we walked through those two schools, uh, I know Ms. Coburn looked at some things that she thought the other uh, kindergarten uh, preschool uh, classrooms might be able to utilize. So we've already started that process, that thinking. And um, we have asked um, Mrs. Dingus for a month. We felt like a month, when, once her teachers are in the building, that uh, we're actually going to padlock the school so that she and uh, Mr. Smith and maybe the custodian would have, they would only have the kids to get in to try to prevent it. You know, I don't know how, but sometimes other people get keys to buildings, you know, for various reasons, and that might be able to uh, slow down, you know, people going in and just kind of picking up things that really need, they need to go, it needs to go to another school. So, we've been thinking about that, uh, Steve. Since we're going to use the, the gym, is it possible that we can keep some things there like the ice machine for concession stands. I mean, we would want that concession during the ball game. I, I'm sure Ms. Davis is probably thinking, you know that. Um, I can't remember what all she did uh, <coughs> ask for as far as the concession stand. When we walked through, do you remember this Well, I know she does want to keep anything associated to be used for the concession stand. Keep uh, it in that field. Yes. Uh -huh. she, she has mentioned that. Good. Yeah, there are some things that you probably have to keep. Yeah. Well, we talked about that, you know, trying how do we keep that down, uh, you know, even within that month of us trying to get in there and get as much, let them get as much um, materials and equipment um, and not let something happen to the rest of it so that we can get it to the schools so we don't have I mean, there's some good uh, materials. There's really some, you know, some good equipment, but. Well, we need know. to leave the cameras operating. That, yes. You're right. You're probably not. Thank you. They and Mike. Because that, that was something that we were talking about yesterday. What do we leave for a while? We can, uh, we can leave all the utilities on for a month or so and all the schools get in and inspect and find out what, what they want to do. What they need to take out here, we can leave all that on. Are we uh, pretty much uh, square away? Is there any more questions on the uh, new parts, AK through A? Do you have any education as to the open house? is going to be on the 4th. That's when the stickers will be um, the community, you know, parents, the children. Uh, and she's going to have tours. That's what her um, plan is. Like every 20 minutes or 30 minutes or something that she would, uh, you know, have someone to lead a tour and then throughout. Now, as far as the dedication, is that word correct this time? The, as far as the dedication, we do not have that date set. I know you all indicated the other night a little bit that you might prefer that it not be during the weekday, correct? During the school time. 
That wasn't the journal report of that, it was the uh, Gazette. That was the Gazette report of that. Oh, was it? Was it? Was that the yeah. Yes, it was the, yes. I saw it, I saw it on the news, I'm so excited. I did too. Uh, you have to resubmit, is that correct? Yes, that would be correct. We have to resubmit next year, next fall. Right. Oh, so we submitted it the we weren't We weren't awarded. Oh, uh, sorry. I thought it was still pending. I guess it is till next year. It is. We are going to have a lunch here tomorrow at 11 o'clock. I would like to invite each one of you. You do not have to bring anything except your uh, appetite. Eleven. You got one. I'm sorry, guys. I'm, I'm not going to be able to make this. So. I have a oh, okay. I have to go to work. <laughs> I might be back on that one. Well, even but if you don't hear it, come on in whenever you get here. We'll have leftovers. What are you all have? Just some sweet potato chips. Is this, is this, just is this just a stay. potluck? Is this just, just like whatever variety. they bring? Variety. Uh, there, there's a variety. Did you all, I mean, did you all like say, just bring a dish? Or did you all like write it bring down and say, somebody's bring bring bringing it? Bring the coordinator. Bring the coordinator. Bring the coordinator. I've got a few sick days. About 50. Well, we have, You're on TV. Well, I don't care. We have, uh, <laughs> they have ordered a, a meatloaf order. But then we have everyone who brings their favorite. And it's always uh, delicious. Uh, several desserts. We have. Everything. All kind of casseroles. People have told me what they're bringing. I'm not going to sit here and sign it all, but it's just uh, anything you can imagine is what we're going to have. Sounds good. I just depends on when I sign in. Hey, you know what? Somebody sign in. It's almost 10. We could just, just stay here. We may not even go home. Let's go home. I think we're too tired. Yeah. 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 Yes. Okay. I make a motion that we adjourn until uh, January the 3rd, 2012 right. at 6 p.m. Could I present this before we adjourn yes. so it can be part of the official minutes? Uh, Ms. Lucas, I can present to you as a Christmas present uh, from the board members. Oh, thank you. Merry Christmas. Thanks for being Well, if you all want to sit real still, I'll go and get your gift. I'm sure they will. You didn't have <laughs> Would you help me? I, I made a motion. Let's look forward to adjourn. All, right. All those in favor of adjourn, please say aye. aye. aye.